So I'm joined today by Leon McFarlane and Hadi Salah from Imperial, who've been working with Professor Robin Shattuck in particular on COVID-19 vaccine development and vaccines in general, just to talk about vaccines, some of the concerns people may have, and to address why we might be having hesitancy within the black community. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Hadi, when we talk about vaccine hesitancy and the recent SAGE report, which found that 75% of black people might be hesitant in taking up the coronavirus vaccine, are you surprised by these figures or that large numbers within the black community are hesitant? Based on mistrust, I don't think I am that surprised by the numbers. I understand where it comes from. Uh, I think a lot more creativity needs to come about in terms of engaging with these communities like going down like to the grassroots and engaging with community leaders whether it be um, imams in the mosque or uh, priests in the church the all these are the places that you tend to find the black community and these are the people that they look up to and trust and engaging with these people will make a world of difference I think. as scientists as experts within vaccinations how do you have those conversations? How do we start to build trust, Leon? In terms of building trust, yet again, it's about exposure, it's about transparency and having a representative to actually portray the fact that these vaccines are safe and it is important to take these vaccines if the opportunity has been given to you. How do you know they're safe? So based on the fact that we have done initial clinical trials on many of the different platforms that are used to create these vaccines, so when I say safe is the case where when it does come to clinical trials, safety is the first and foremost most important thing before it comes to the actual immunological data. So within clinical trials, each volunteer is monitored for adverse effects. What are the stages in terms of clinical trials and how that leads to then having a vaccine um, that's available widely for public use? If we start already from the beginning, so just before it even goes into humans, it's the case where we do preclinical trials, which are generally animal based. Then from the animal phase, it then goes into phase one, where we look mainly for safety and we use very low doses or very small doses of a vaccine to see if it's the case where we can generate some sort of immune response and just to make sure that everything is safe. And this is generally in a very small group of participants. Then we move on to phase two, which can generally be in the participant range of 100 to 300, 400. And that's the case where, yet again, safety is always the main importance. Look at that and also look at the immunogenicity. Then when it comes to phase three, that's where thousands of volunteers are recruited. And it's a case where we already know that the vaccine or a vaccine is safe. And it's more the case of, OK, now let's see what data we can get in terms of is this vaccine effective? Does it give us the immune response that is necessary to protect against an infection, which in this case would be SARS-CoV-2? Have you found that you've got had friends or family coming to you about the, um, the vaccine and asking you about it and whether it's safe to use? Yeah, so I've definitely had a lot of family and friends coming to ask for um, advice and just find out more information about the vaccine. I I'm actually quite surprised like how many people are really interested in how this vaccine works. Um, once upon a time, people didn't care so much about what I did, but it's definitely a lot more important now. And I think um, I didn't realise the impact that I could have on the people that's like are part of my immediate surrounding. But I think it's important that that transcends further um, through like I mentioned before, sort of communication and engagement with the wider community because I think in order for this vaccine to work properly, it can't just be a small group of people taking it. We all need to take it. And when you look at uh, black people being two times more likely to die from um, catching coronavirus, I think it's, it resonates with me even more and further, like just emphasizes the urgency for um, the black community to understand how this vaccine can help them, but also for them to be able to take the opportunity to be able to be in control of their own health outcomes, it's really important. How important is representation within medicine and within science or having more black people involved within the science or within clinical trials in terms of maybe fostering more trust or more um, support for the work that you're doing? If I was watching a YouTube video on skincare, 
if the inf if the information was coming from someone that had the same skin color as me, I know that they experienced the same things I challenges I experienced with my skin in terms of let's say dark spots, and I'm more likely to take the products that they would recommend rather than not that somebody else doesn't have good recommendations, but I know that this is someone who understands where I'm coming from, and I think that's really important. How, as a scientist, how concerned are you about misinformation and social media being the way in which this spreads so rapidly? I think we're in an age where we're like overwhelmed with the amount of information that we receive and it's very hard to sort of sift through the rubbish um, and understand what is actually true and what's false. It's important to be able to critically think and apply that to the information that you're given. I think me and Leon's families are fortunate in the sense that they have um, people that are quite informed like us, that they can ask and, but they also trust to be able to help dispel some of this in, uh, misinformation. Again, why it's really important for uh, people from our type of background to be more involved and engaged in science because it doesn't just affect us, but it also affects the communities that surround us. Leon, how harmful can misinformation be? The more misinformation, the more people that are going to be hesitant in terms of taking a vaccine, which means the more people that could potentially be exposed to um, actual infection. And with that being the case, it, the, in terms of the whole community, in terms of world population, it's just, yeah, it's the case where you are more likely to have more deaths, you are more likely to have more hospitalizations. So it definitely is something that we must try and curb. So are you saying that potentially if we have this high level of vaccine hesitancy within community, like the black community, for example, could it be that the virus will just continue to spread within the community if people are not vaccinated? Yes, I agree with that. It's the case where um, there'll be more lost loved ones, which is something that we definitely do not want. In terms of um, messaging or how we engage with the black community, do you think we might need to change what's been done so far or what would you like to see more of? We definitely need to become more creative in our approach and also I think it's really important that in order to connect with this, like certain communities properly, you need to understand their cultural dynamics. For some, cult for some people that's really really important and that's where you can get their trust and also understand them better. It's important to have a more empathetic approach rather than just sort of dismissing someone's concerns as and maybe uh, and also understanding that vaccine hesitancy is quite different from being anti-vax and that these are people that are thinking they just don't understand and it's our responsibility to help them understand. What I would like to see is, well, leading by example. Yeah, again, those who are seen as the pillars of the community, I would like those lead by example. Go ahead, get to the vaccination stations, be vaccinated if you can. Yeah, again, I know at this current time point, it's the case where it's more the elderly population who have been selected for vaccination. But I reckon that once we start seeing major pillars of the community being vaccinated, others will follow. As a scientist yourself, um, how important do you think um, the community, the science community, need to be at the forefront in terms of explaining these vaccines, explaining the safety of these vaccines and why people need to be vaccinated? I think the key to su the success of translational medicine is being able to bridge the connection between your science and the, pe the communities that it's going to affect. So it's really important to have people that look like the communities that they're trying to make an impact in and be able to connect with them and share the way the science works in a way that they can understand. I mean, what a year it's been in terms of, for you, in terms of the work that you've been doing responding to the pandemic. Has it made you think about uh, vaccine development being something that you want to be in more long term or has it made you think about other areas of science you'd like to be involved in? I think I've been really fortunate to be a part of this whole uh, process in terms of being at the forefront of vaccine development and seeing the vaccine rollout like happening live. Um, I definitely want to stay in vaccine development, it's really important. Um, I think especially when you look at uh, low income settings, uh, where infrastructure is not very 
um, strong, I think it's important to have preventative measures to, pre to stop outbreaks ha uh, happening. I think it's also like brought home to me the importance of effective science communication and how that will help me to sort of explain my science to the wider community, but also the community I come from. I guess the work doesn't stop as well um, regarding the recent announcement that Imperial's vaccine work in terms of COVID um, has pivoted more looking at potentially future mutations. Is that something you're both involved in and how do you feel about that? So it's been an immense team effort and we've all had to like learn new skills and make reagents for it to be able to be used in clinical trials. Um, I think the beauty of our platform is how like broadly applicable it is and how we can quickly adapt with along with the virus to combat it before the pandemic becomes out of hand. Can I ask you both, when it comes your time, um, the call comes to you about being vaccinated, will you take it up? Will you be vaccinated? Funnily enough, I actually have already been vaccinated and it's the case where if you are selected for vaccination, I definitely urge you to take the vaccination. Uh, it, it's for your safety and it's for the safety of others and your loved ones. Unlike Leon, I haven't been fortunate enough to have my vaccine yet, but I'm patiently waiting to get the call. I think it's important that we take this uh, fantastic opportunity to be able to protect ourselves and like control our own health outcomes. Um, I think we're very fortunate in the sense that we have access to these vaccines where I know some of my family members in other parts of the world won't maybe see this vaccine for a few years and who knows what could happen then. So if you are given the opportunity to take the vaccine, I would definitely take it.